artist, it's Miss Yeiser. So by now you should have heard the read aloud of this book, The Day the Crayons Came Home. If you didn't, pause this video and go find the link or just search it on YouTube. Or maybe you even have this book in your library at home. It's a really funny story where these crayons of Duncan's are left all over the place and have horrible things happen to them. And then they write postcards to Duncan about what they've experienced. So in this postcard, this little turquoise crayon talks about how he got stuck in the dryer to a sock and now they're forever stuck together. Um, so what I wanna do is I wanna have you guys have some fun thinking about making something similar. So here's my example and this is my glue stick and the, um, the letter is all about how this glue stick has been dried out because somebody left the top off of him. So, um, dear Mrs. Yeiser, all I'm good for is to stick things together. And now look at me. I'm all shriveled up and dried out and not sticky. Tell your student that forgot to put my top back on that I said, thanks a lot. You are good for nothing glue stick. And what I've done was I've put it in the format of a postcard. And in order to make it look like a postcard, it's got these little um, rounded corners. It has a line that is sort of a little bit less than halfway. And on this side, this is where you would put your stamp and an address. So I wrote the words postcard, and then I wrote Mrs. Yeiser, art room number 204, Mamaroneck, New York. So I'm gonna have you guys try to do the same layout. So you're gonna wanna hold your paper horizontally, and you're gonna wanna draw a nice big rectangle in pencil and create this postcard look. Then your job is to let's brainstorm some different things. So I'm just going to use art tools. You don't have to do art tools. You can think of any object that's in your house, like for example, toothpaste um, or a hairbrush or anything like that. But so I've made a list of some art supplies here. And the two questions that you want to ask yourself are what not to do with these objects and why. So let's take an example. So let's say liquid glue, so Elmer's liquid glue. In my classroom, I have a little poem that reminds students to twist the top and clean it, otherwise it'll get all like hardened up. And so um, what not to do with it? Don't squeeze glue and let glue drip out all over the Elmer's glue and then just leave it like that. And why? Why would you not want to do that? Well, because then the glue is going to harden all over the top of the glue bottle. So if I wanted to use that as my example, I would have to think about a, a way to sort of give personification to my glue bottle. So personification is a big fancy word that basically is when you give objects a human personality. And this story, um, the day the crayons came home, the author has personified a crayon because obviously a crayon can't speak. But in this story, the crayon is writing all sorts of letters and experiencing all sorts of things that human beings would normally experience. So if we pick the glue bottle, we would have to say, okay, if I were a glue bottle and I had glue squished out all over my face, I'd probably have this like grossed out face on. And what would I write? How would I write a story or a letter to somebody? So I would write to Mrs. Yeiser, Thanks a lot for leaving me like this. Now I can't see because the glue is in my eyes. You know, something funny like that. Um, in my classroom, I have Mr. Bristles. And this is Mr. Bristles. And he is angry because somebody forgot to wash paint out of his hair. And now his hair is all stiff. And he is not happy about that. So this is just another example. And I'm going to um, let you guys just take another look at this but you can certainly think of other things. And once you've got the idea, then what you're gonna to start to do is you're going to begin by drawing a rectangle on your paper. So I'm gonna just show you really quickly how to draw the postcard, and then the rest is gonna be up to you. So you can do it on either side, and um, begin by drawing your rectangle. And then on the right hand side is the side where you put the address. So you're going to draw a line. So if this were, this would be middle, I'm going to move it over just a little bit to the right and then draw four lines. 
I'll draw a little square in the corner and then some like bumps around it to look like the stamp. And then here is where you would write your letter. So if I were in the Elmer's glue bottle and I'm writing it to me, I would start off with to Mrs. Yeiser or dear Mrs. Yeiser. And then I would write all about what happened to me and why I'm not happy about it. And then I would close my letter with something. So um, your, your, if the glue is in the eyes, I could say from your blind glue bottle or your, I don't know, I would write something like that. And then you would draw over here. Now, I would recommend looking online for a photo of the object or even better if you have the object actually in front of you. So I used these two items to draw the examples that I had. I actually don't have a liquid glue bottle, so I would have to go online and try to look at it, and then I would add my details. I will tell you, because I'm an art teacher, I've looked at glue bottles all my life, so I feel like I know pretty well what they look like and how to draw them, because I've also drawn them a whole bunch of times. So I'm just gonna draw my glue bottle as big as I can. And um, then I'm gonna add a face and maybe some arms and I didn't really leave room for legs, but maybe I could put little feet down here. And if you look at the picture book, the, the story, the illustrator made very simple arms. So where could I put his his face, I don't know, I could put it down here, but in my story, in my letter, he's gonna have a face here because the glue is squishing out. So let's just say the glue is dripping out. There's even drips of glue down here. And maybe he's even standing in a puddle. And then this is his eye, one of his eyes are there. That's how I would close my letter. You, your one-eyed glue. All right, so this is the gist of it. And of course you can color it in and that always looks fantastic. I recommend when you color, if you're using um, crayons, something that I like to do is I like to press really hard on my lines and then I color in pressing softer. Another thing I do is I like to blend colors together. So this is a light blue and a dark blue. Um, and then I, I did add some shading. So this glue stick is white, but I did a gray crayon and I just colored lightly on one side to make it look a little like a shadow. So these are just some techniques that you can do um, when, you're, when you're coloring, if you choose to. Another cool thing to do is use a marker to outline and then color in with crayon. Um, that will help your drawing to stand out. All right. so. Have fun with it, make it funny, and I cannot wait to see you guys post any of your ideas or your artwork on your virtual galleries in your, in your school building's virtual gallery. Thanks everybody. Bye.